fucked up. And these students had to fucking face them on your own. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should be standing up to those Nazis. You should be protecting these students from hate. This is hate. These are fucking assholes. And this is a joke. You're protecting the Nazis. It's a fucking joke. You are a joke. You're grown boys. You're grown boys. And even the black ones. You're a fucking brown boy too, you motherfucker. You're not protecting the NYU students here. And I'm disgusted. I'm a professor. How dare you? How dare you fucking assholes protect neo-Nazis? Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. These are kids who are trying to learn about humanity. They're trying to learn about human rights and against racism and xenophobia and LGBTQ rights. And you're letting these fucking neo-Nazis near here. You should kick their ass. You should. You should be ashamed of yourself. You should. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. It's not up to these students to kick the ass of a neo-Nazi. They don't have to raise their fists. They were taught to be peaceful. Fuck you. Fuck you. It's coming from a professor. I'm a professor. She's a God professor. Damn it. Hey, guys, she's a professor. And you're here to protect the Nazis. So fuck you. God fucking damn it. Those kids should not have to take fists up to neo-Nazis and you're putting them in that situation. Go to hell. This story this morning, oh my word, this guy was on a plane. He's a professor at Drexel University. He's super liberal. His name's George, how do you pronounce this? Maybe. Chicarello or something like, like that? It. That's his picture. So he's on a plane. He sees a guy, a nice Samaritan in first class, giving up his seat for a soldier. So he tweeted this out. Some guy gave up his first class seat for a uniformed soldier. People are thanking him. I'm trying not to vomit. Or yell about Mosul. Unbelievable. Now keep in mind, the fella up in first class in the uniform, he, thanks to his service, he gave the guy from Drexel the opportunity to write dumb tweets. Absolutely. Right, uh, the freedom. So what do you think about that? Uh, tweet us now. It's already creating a firestorm before the show. I can imagine during the show. Well, we'll get to your comments. This is the same guy that Brian. Remember in the uh, past? You might not remember it, but well, in the article you can read this. He also claimed, uh, called for white genocide at one point over the Christmas holiday, right. and then hoped he, to abolish the white race. He said, "All I want for Christmas is white genocide." At the time, uh, Drexel University came out and said that is completely disgusting and inappropriate. But a couple of days later, they said it was satire. It was protected speech. He continues his job at Drexel. If I remember correctly, <laughs> May first, you really have to decide what college you're going to. And I imagine Drexel, which is a good reputation, mm -hmm. people are said if they can get lucky enough to get in, they have to make a big decision. I think this helps a lot of people with their decision. If that's their view to hire somebody with those views that feels bold enough to tweet them out to the rest of the world and impervious to any type of backlash, maybe you should pick another university. Unless, of course, you agree. Well, you know, we all work so hard. You bring up a good point because we work so hard for our money. We're already saving for our kids to go to college. You have a child in college. Imagine working as hard as you do. You do three hours of morning, three hours of radio, your money going to this university and paying for this teacher to teach your son. Well, here's the Imagine. other thing. It's not the only university with professors yep. who've got views like this. I white supremacist and a vice president that is uh, one of the most anti-gay uh, humans in this uh, country. And so we are in for uh, a difficult time, but again, I do believe that we can get past that. Our nation is divided. We have been assaulted. It's an act of terrorism. One of the most frightening things for me and most people in my life is that the people committing the assault are among us. It is not some stranger from some other country 
coming in and attacking our sense of what it means to be an American and the things that we stand for. And that makes it more painful because I'm sure that all of us have people in our families and our circle of friends that are a part of that movement and it is very difficult. A new reaction today to a story we brought you earlier this week. Back in 1981, a group of student radicals, domestic terrorists, known as the Weather Underground, robbed an armored car in New York State and killed three people in the process, including two police officers and this Brinks guard, a father of three, Peter Page. In fact, all of the murdered victims had children. The driver of the getaway car, Kathy Boudin, pleaded guilty to murder and spent 22 years behind bars for the crime. She was granted parole back in 2003. And this week, the New York Post reported that she has been, since 2008, teaching in a prestigious post at, at the Ivy League's Columbia University. Kathy Boudin uh, orphaned nine children that day, and we should never forget that. Well, it's been two weeks since rioters at UC Berkeley used violence to force the cancellation of a speech by Milo Yiannopoulos. Most people were appalled by what happened, but Yvette Falarka is not among those people. Besides working as a public school teacher in California, she is the national organizer for the Coalition to Defend Affirmative Action, Integration, and Immigrant Rights, and Fight for Equality by Any Means Necessary. BAM is the acronym. Flarka is willing to integrate violence into her political agenda, as you can see from this clip of her disrupting a rally last summer in Sacramento. Flarka helped organize the Berkeley protests, and she says activists ought to copy his tactics for other speakers and events around the country. Yvette Flarka.